So I'm really excited to share with you how light, light alone, specifically artificial light at night, can drive things like obesity, diabetes, metabolic syndrome, and more. We don't really think of light when it comes to those conditions. We think more of the food intake, right? Maybe we think of toxins, but there is a huge um, amount of literature indicating that how light interacts with a specific chemical in our brain, depending on how that light interacts with it, it can literally cause us to have elevated blood glucose and elevated insulin in the absence of food. So I'm gonna dive into that today. But first I wanna remind all of you practitioners that my practitioner mentorship program starts very soon. A uh, sign up for it is gonna begin here shortly. And I just wanted to inform you that this is an opportunity to go through all of this quantum and circadian help that I teach uh, both to my clients and to practitioners, but in a more int intimate setting where I can actually give you case studies, where we can talk about what did we do when we're presented with this particular client? What about this particular disease condition? So it's 10 weeks to just interact with me on a weekly basis, two hours at a time, to answer all your questions, but also for me to be able to teach you more than I can teach simply through uh, an online course. So it's a very intimate way that we can get to know each other and I can help support your clinical practice. Beyond also just the quantum health health uh, strategies that I use in clinical practice, I open my back end of my business. I run both a successful online business as well as a successful brick and mortar business. And so for those of you who are interested in learning how that happens, or maybe want support in that, I open up my back end of both of those in order to be able to share with you things like what my tech stack looks like, um, what I do for marketing, how I capture emails, lead magnets, all of those things. So I'm excited to share that with you. I'm an open book with this stuff. So please, if you really want that type of one-on-one -on -one support, it's not one-on-one, -on -one, it's like one on 30. We cap it at 30, right? Um, but it's a small group support as a means of being able to help you implement these circadian and quantum strategies in your clinical practice, as well as helping to support you at the, on the business side of things as well. So I'm thrilled uh, at the opportunity to potentially work with you like that. And I would look forward to seeing you in the next cohort. Now let's dive into how artificial light at night can literally cause obesity, diabetes, metabolic syndrome. And in order to do that, I want to share my screen with you here. So let me pull up a slide that uh, on a, of a specific um, protein called POMC. So let's see here. Okay, so hopefully you can see here at the top, you see this big old bar and that bar, that long bar has the, the acronym POMC in it. And POMC stands for pro-opiomelanocortin pathway, pro-opiomelanocortin. -pro it's, it's just basically a very large peptide. I think it's like 241 amino acids, don't hold me to it, but it's a big, big peptide. But what's cool about it is that it can get cut, the, the technical term would be cleaved into different sizes. And as it gets cleaved into different sizes, it becomes different metabolites. And all of these metabolites are biologically active. So POMC is this, is this basically this protein that's found mostly in the hypothalamus and the pituitary inside of the brain. And it is very responsive to light signaling. Certainly there's other inputs into the hypothalamic region, but because the eyes have a direct connection to the hypothalamus via the retinohypothalamic tract, light inputs into the eyes can very much dictate how POMC gets cleaved. And I wanna highlight this in particular in conjunction with obesity, diabetes, metabolic syndrome. So what we now know is that blue light, artificial blue light, blue light that's imbalanced, right? In nature, we will never find blue light when it is without red and, and the infrared spectrum. So when we remove blue from that, that's imbalancing. And especially when we have blue light present in our environment, in our environment at night, that is an unnatural signal for us to have. If we would have had any illumination from light at night, it would have been through things like fire, campfire, stars, and the moon. And none of those contain adequate amounts of blue light to stimulate what I'm about to talk about. So what we're dealing with now is artificial blue light from screens and light bulbs. And what we know what happens now is that when we are around artificial blue light at night and we allow that to enter the eyes, it causes this POMC chemical, this POMC protein peptide to get cleaved into ACTH and also CLIP, C-L-I-P right there. That pathway gets stimulated. And when that pathway gets stimulated, we, we both increase blood glucose levels and we also increase insulin levels as well without eating any food, right? That's the thing. This is how light, artificial light at night can drive obesity, can drive diabetes because we are literally make, increasing our blood sugar without food. So how does that happen? 
Well, ACTH, that's the precursor to cortisol. When it gets released, it actually allows for the body to elevate blood glucose levels. It can do that through something called gluconeogenesis, where the, the liver actually makes new glucose for us and puts it into our bloodstream, uh, even when we're not eating anything. So we have a pathway that gets stimulated with ACTH. And then the pathway that gets stimulated with CLIP, CLIP has been studied as an insulin secretagogue, meaning something that, that it, uh, excites the secretion of insulin from the pancreas, right? Or stimulates the secretion of insulin from the pancreas. And so both of those being elevated at night, especially in the absence of food, picture how that could easily dysregulate blood glucose and easily then lead to the body needing to have a storage depot for all that excess blood glucose in you know, body fat. Uh, it's probably, it's very much probably a tr prime driver of why we see so much non-alcoholic fatty liver disease as well. Certainly soda and poor foods make, a, make up a large portion of that as well, but no one ever considers the concept of light. So if you're a clinician and you're working with clients who are challenged by their weight, they're challenged by their blood sugar regulation, um, they're challenged by their uh, elevated insulin levels. And when we have that particular type of a pattern, when we see continuously elevated blood glucose and insulin, we also have a dysregulation when it comes to leptin. And I talk all about leptin in my practitioner trainings. Um, it's a very key hormone to understand when it comes to metabolic health. And so if we dysregulate those, we dysregulate leptin. If we dysregulate leptin, we, ha we have hormone repercussions all across the board. Um, and a lot of pathologies can present themselves as well. So this is why I really like clinicians to be aware of light and how light can signal certain pathways because we can very easily start to optimize someone's light environment at night, also during the daytime. It doesn't take a lot of work. It's not very expensive. It's just the awareness. And when we have the awareness and we can explain it to our clients in a way where it really is like, oh my gosh, I didn't even know this was a thing, but that absolutely means that I, this is why I could be elevating blood glucose at night without eating. I eat clean. Uh, I don't eat after 7 PM. And yet somehow I'm not able to lose weight or somehow my blood glucose is all over the place or, or somehow I've got high fasting insulin levels. Well, here we go, right? This can play a huge role when it comes to that. So, you know, uh, again, I, I love teaching this stuff. I love sharing this stuff. I'm so happy to have you here as a practitioner because I can't teach this alone to people. I need the I need practitioners to help to spread this message as well so that people can start to understand how their relationship with light is either helping them or harming them. Again, would love to see you in that practitioner mentorship program and I will see you next time.